was a great performance today. Oh, thank you. It was you. very beautiful. Mm -hmm. well, this so how did you start it and how did it grow? Oh, how did I start? <laughs> well, I started quite a long time ago because uh, I've always been interested in Wushu. So in uh, 1978, a whole lot of us wanted to learn Wushu. Uh, so we got together uh, lots of friends. So in the beginning, how did we learn Wushu? We go to the movies, you take a camera and you video and you go home and you try and figure out how to do it. Because one of my uncles, he ran a theater in Chinatown. So they would be able to get movies from China. And of course, you're talking about the 70s now, you couldn't get movies from China. But my uncle had a way to do it. So we brought it in through Hong Kong or Canada so we could show it in the United States. Because at that time, we don't have relationships with, with China. Yes. So uh, that was how we began in the beginning, and then my uncle was part of a, a group that brought the first Wushu team to the United States. So that's how I met Jet Li at that time. He was a little boy at that time, like, I think 11 years old. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, so it was really cool. And uh, so that's partly the beginning of Wushu in America uh, in the 70s. So we had uh, actually three groups. We had one in Boston, under Donnie Yen's mother, you know Donnie Yen, the movie star, right? His mother yeah. is a wushu uh, athlete and star, and so she was one of the, the groups in uh, Boston. We had one in Los Angeles under Roger Tong, and then we had our San Francisco group. So that kind of began wushu in this country, and we held our first. I think let's see, I'm trying to remember what year that was. I don't even remember. I would say 1979, but I don't remember now. But Somewhere uh, there, right? <laughs> yeah, sometime in that time, we had the first American uh, championship. So the, the three different groups brought teams together and we competed in Los Angeles. So, so this uh, started with three, and today was how many? Today is quite a few. Actually, I don't even know exactly how many there are. But as I tell people, it's still not enough. We need a lot more because um, the way Wushu has been developed, most of the time it's been developed from the top down. So you have high level athletes, but you don't have very much on the bottom. And so we're hoping that, you know, eventually we're going to build up the bottom. I think it's, it's, it, introduction is needed probably more. Right. I didn't know about Wushu at all. Yeah, like, unless you've met me. Yes. <laughs> now this is a uh, dinner with the, Olympic, with the Olympic Committee. Okay, these guys are all, you know, well known. So I said, well, I do Wushu. And one of the guys says, isn't that something you eat? I go, no, 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 that's not Wushu, that's Wushu. Okay? Oh, Wushu. Wushu, yeah, but Wushu this is a martial art. So what so, is Wushu? Hold on. <laughs> now I want to know what's Wushu. Wushu is uh, kind of like a pancake, and you put together green onions and cucumbers, and uh, uh, it's kind of a sweet, sweetened uh, pork. And you roll the whole thing up, kind of like, almost like a... Like an like egg a burrito, roll? Like an egg roll, and then you eat it. That's very good. That's mushu. Yeah, that's mushu pork. Right. Yeah. So now, I have a question for you. Yes. Like, I've seen all those swords. Like, this guy right there yeah. is walking with this huge sword. How actually sharp those things are? Actually, some of them, while they're not really sharp, because they're moving so fast, yes. they will cut right through you. Yeah. Okay. And one of the girls forgot the duck and took out part of Slater. her face. Yeah. Because that thing, when it moves, because That's it's so fixable. thin, yeah, it moves so fast, it just cut right through you. Oh. Yeah. Whereas the sword I use, that one's real thick. It's like a traditional mm -hmm. sword. So that's more like you stab somebody with it, it'll go through it. You know, so we have more weapons than anyone else, and we have cooler weapons. So, you know, it's kind of fun. So how big is it in San Francisco, and how can we put it out there? How would you like to be? For, for audience to receive the message of Wushu? Well, I think uh, a couple things are Wushu. In the Bay Area, actually, is not bad. Because, like, you saw the Shaolin monks now. They have a lot of schools here. Oh my gosh, yeah. yes. And they're fantastic. So, uh, a lot of the Shaolin monks have come to California, so we have a lot of their schools. And then there are people from different generations of American Wushu who have their schools here. So, uh, we have in California at least, a lot of Wushu. So the problem in America right now is Wushu is found where? On the West Coast and on the East Coast. In between, there's not very Nothing. much. Yeah. And so if you go in between, like in the middle of the country, you tell them you do Wushu, no one knows what you're talking about. Okay, so 
it needs to be, how should we say, turned into a household name. Uh, you look at, like, even Jet Li, uh, Danny Yen, they all do wushu, and still it hasn't quite made a breakthrough because people don't realize what is it they actually do. You know? Yeah, people don't know. Yeah, people don't I didn't know. know. And if now, if I found out that this is here since 20 years, yes. it's pretty amazing. It's not even longer than that in America. So, like I said, uh, I go back to 1978. That's kind of like when uh, the Wushu team came to America mm -hmm. to perform. So, uh, And you we, kept them here. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we did. Yeah. So, Good. like, uh, Li Jing, who performed this evening, she's a former Beijing team mm -hmm. member. So I've had, how should I say, a long relationship with them because uh, when I went to train, we trained in Beijing. So uh, the coach in Beijing is, is the same coach that coached Jet Li. So we have a lot of, uh, how should I say, interchange between uh, America and them because of uh, the contact that we have. So how long you had to stay in Beijing? Usually when we take people to train, uh, two weeks to a half a year. It depends on what you want to do. But in the old days, it used to be cheap. So, you know, you go to... Not anymore. Do. Not anymore. No, it's real expensive. Because when I went to train, it cost me $5 a day. Okay, and that's five Chinese dollars a day, which is about 25 cents. Okay. Oh. Now, it's $95 a day American. So very, very high. They know their value. Oh, yes. That's what, yeah. so very, <laughs> That's very what high. it is. Very high. But to uh, accommodate Americans, they built a hotel for us. Uh, oh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So the school was, uh, when I went, it was even, you know, it's not very nice. So it didn't even have real toilets. Okay. Wow. Now it's like, you know, uh, it has a uh, brand new gym, it's it has a nice. parking lot, it has hotel, restaurant, the whole works. So, you know, big, big change. But it's also because we take students there, they're able to... Function you know, get, get on money, the American... Get money yeah. and, and it helps them, yeah. So we're hoping that uh, that also helps us. So, <laughs> so we have a website, that's the uh, sanfranciscowushu.net, and mm -hmm. so they can look on there. Uh, that's San Francisco Wushu.net? Yes. So they, they go I'm also at BeijingBagua.com because I'm also a uh, Bagua master. So that's one of the things that I teach. Bagua yeah, master. Bagua. And what is Bagua? Uh, Bagua. <laughs> Bagua is actually based on a um, Taoist meditation. Uh, you saw people demonstrating today, like Sifu Patty Lee. She was doing Bagua. Uh, Brandon, he did Bagua too. Mm -hmm. So it's an unusual because most forms are straight, right? And you can go for, And they did it in a circle. They go in a circle. Yeah, they yeah. it, yeah. And it's actually very hard to learn because the form has no back or front, no beginning or end. You can start anywhere and get going. Okay, so you have to have what? A good sense of direction or you get lost yourself. Or you can follow the yin yang. Yeah, well, the <laughs> well, that's what it's supposed to do. The pattern of the form follows the yin and yang. Yes. Yeah. So, that's yeah. why. Yeah. Wonderful. And so it's, it's actually the lifestyle. Yeah. That is what wushu should be. My teacher used to tell me, he goes, if you do your martial art only in the studio, there's no use. He says, you need to do it everywhere that you do it. But he's, he doesn't mean you're going to go and fight with everyone, but the kind of focus that you develop, the kind of attitude you mm -hmm. have comes from the, your practice, and then you have to, how, how should say, every part of your life, you lead it in the same way. Mm -hmm. It's not separate. I want to thank you, Master. Thank you. Thank you so much, yes. and good luck with everything, and I hope I see you in 2018. That's right. So we'll see you Great. then. Great. Well, good luck. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you.